what I'm interested in you and that we've discussed is you took the beatings and you're, you're, I, I can't think of very many people better than you at diffusing, uh, conflict and, uh, making both sides feel heard. And you're like walking contrition. I've said that in the press mm-hmm. about you before. Mm-hmm. I hear you. you are walking contrition. It's that's South African. It's like why you're so you're a good, you know, avatar for South Africa in, in general. Right. But when we've talked about the role violence played in getting you there, what do you make of it? I'm torn. On the one hand, I think to myself, the violence I experienced, whether it was at a country level, at a societal level, at a familial level, contributed to making me who I am. But then sometimes I think maybe the only reason I survived all of that was because this is already who I am. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like we we don't know for certain which way it goes. We don't know where it starts. And so sometimes we will say, oh, well, you know, everything that happened to me made me who I am. It's like, oh, maybe who you are is the only reason you survived everything that happened to you. Right. Because many people have gone through similar experiences. They haven't come out the same way, you know? And so... It, it makes me hesitant and maybe even a little resentful of people who sort of justify terrible things. Yeah, it because, you know, Bill said here. Yeah, that's one of the things that haunts me is who was I supposed to be before all this shit happened to mm-hmm. me? He thinks about that. Interesting. Who was I, who was I intended to be before the sort of huh. physical abuse? And, and it's, a, it's a third option for yours, which is like, you were gonna be you were gonna be this without the beating. That's what you I think. I'll yeah. be honest. I think that. I think that and I I think it just brings you out of you maybe a little bit more. Right. Or maybe it pushes you into you a little bit more. I don't I don't know which way it goes, but I I I'm not quick to accept the notion that the trauma makes the people because right. I think that very same trauma breaks the people. So I think right. I think it's something else that we might be missing sometimes. And I I argue with Everyone, therapists about it. I argue with like, you know, because I think it's, it, I think it's worth discussing and it's, a, it's an idea to think about. So if, when you go like I'm walking contrition, I think I don't, everything. And when I say that, I don't think you're a bitch. No, 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 you know no. I mean? I've didn't, I didn't assume that I would think that until you said it now. Like hmm. an, until you just said, I didn't think you're a bitch. And I'm like, wait, what? what? We I all have regrets. <laughs> <laughs> Looking back, I could have not said it. So um, it's, it's funny. This is like a, a perfect combination of everything coming together, making me think and be the way I am. And it makes me wonder if that's, so I come from South Africa. I was trying to explain to somebody the other day that the reason there's no South African restaurant that's successful anywhere in the world, and no one even knows what South African food is, is because South Africa is one of the few countries in the world that is like, it is a melting pot. It's like, if you say, what is Nigerian food? I can point it out to you. Do you know what I mean? There's very specific things that make Nigerian food. If you say to me, oh, okay, what's Taiwanese food? I can show you the cuisine. I can... You can't do that with South African. I can show you what all the different cultures eat, but South Africa, there isn't even a South African person. Does that make sense? Like think of yeah. it, like if, you, if, you're, if you're from Kenya, then you are Kenyan and you, you speak Kenyan and you, you yeah. get what I'm saying? It it goes down. South Africa, no, it's it's the name of a place that a lot of people live in, and that with a thousand different exactly regions, so and you, so tribes. Got, yeah, so you've got tribes, well. you've got languages, you've got cultures, you've got everything. And I think because I grew up in that at the time that I grew up in that, I understood the value in finding the gap between people. And I I'll be honest with you, I think most conflict in life comes from a misunderstanding of language. And not language as we understand it or know it, but all language. So, you know, me having to learn or me learning different languages in South Africa as the country was changing helped me learn very quickly that sometimes people didn't like each other just because they didn't know how to phrase a sentence in another language, you know? They didn't even know how to communicate their similarities. Exactly, exactly. So someone couldn't say... um, may I please have that drink? Someone would go, you give me that drink. Then you're just like, I'm sorry, you think it's your drink? And now all of a sudden there's conflict, Yeah, right? I think about that all the time and I would see it all the time. I'd see it with my mom even, you know? She would say something to me 
she would tell me to do something or she would ask me to do something or she would say what she thought was a request or a command, I wouldn't hear it as such. And then afterwards I'd get into trouble. And I remember being like, that's not what you said. Yeah. She'd be like, I told you to clean the whatever. I'm like, but you didn't though. And I, when I play it back in my head, I go, she said, make yourself useful. I heard you should finish Mario Brothers. I mean, it's useful to know how the game ends. You know, there's yeah. a princess who needs saving. And then she comes back and she goes, you didn't clean the kitchen. And I go, who said clean the kitchen? Yeah. Where most people would immediately just jump to how they think or how they feel. I then start to try and understand where the other person's coming from or why, because I think it's a language breakdown. I think everything in the world, I know this is a very simplistic way to think, but I think literally everything in the world is a language breakdown. You know, so you're driving on the freeway, someone cuts you off. Even that, you've misinterpreted language. You've interpreted as them cutting you off because that's how you're seeing the language. Correct. Yeah. They are going, oh, I saw a gap. I'm trying to take it. I'm trying to get somewhere. And then it happens, it happens across countries, across cultures, across everything. So I've always had an innate ability to see or try and understand what somebody else is saying and then try and bridge the gap between the two. Yeah, I've seen you do it. You've done yeah. it. I've seen you do it. You've done it with me. You've uh, mediation, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me the th or tell the listeners the thing that you're, you and your mother would get into disagreements and then she would have you write an essay? No. So my argument, so I would say to my mom, she's not a good communicator. I still say this to her now. Yeah. I go, hey, you, I don't think you're a great communicator. And what I mean by that is, I think a great communicator is somebody who knows how to understand where the recipient of their message is and understand where their, their message is and figure out the gap between the two. The responsibility is the speakers. It's to anywhere. To think about how this is going to be interpreted. No, which... it's anywhere for me. I'm saying okay. a good communicator can be a great listener. Okay. It's literally, I just go, that's if in my definition, if you're a good communicator, it means you are just able to fill in the gaps of what is happening. You're understanding what the other person's saying or you're intuiting or you, you, you're like fixing it. Yeah. A good speaker can be a good speaker. A good listener can be a good listener. But if you, you might fail at the other, then I don't think you're a great communicator. And I would say to her, I don't think you're a good communicator, mom, which is very tough for and me to like say. And you're like 10, 11, 12. Yeah, I mean, at that age, these are like, you know what I mean? This is like, nuclear disarmament com <laughs> yeah it's like walking into the un and being like russia i think you guys are a little yeah. uh yeah how, how can i put this bitchy yeah Let's and see you're how 11 and the cops are looking for you <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah it was it was terrifying but there were moments where i would find an opportunity to say something to my mom and to her credit she would i don't even understand what, it would inexplicably she would listen sometimes. And I, I say inexplic inexplicably because most parents in and around me of her generation weren't doing that. You know, now new age parents might, they might even ask their kids, what am I not understanding? Mm -hmm. or, what am I not listening yeah. to? That's beautiful. My mom was doing it when nobody was doing it. So it was, it was unique and it would pop up. And, and I would say to her, hey, listen, I don't think you communicate well. You didn't say this. You think you said it. You hoped I would intuit it, but I, that's not what you said. And this is not how it came about. And maybe this is where I learned a lot of it. Maybe it's because I was living with someone who wasn't a good communicator. So I had to like learn how to, and then the country amplified it. And you're rewarded for it, basically. Exactly. Yeah. And so I said to her, let's, let's do this from now on. Write all your instructions and I will respond in writing to all your instructions. These are chores, rules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. everything. So... You write them all down, and then I will respond in writing. That way, nobody is mishearing or misunderstanding or interrupting. You write it down, you give it to me on a piece of paper. Wasn't there a part in the book where she would kind of dread when you gave her one? It, she'd be like, fuck. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she'd kind of be like, all right, like, I know he's going to have a good point. Yeah. Yeah. My mom always says to me, she still says it now. I was, I was so home. you were like, it seems like you were friends quickly. You were like, it was father or mother, son, but also like cohorts or something like closer yeah, it's, to equals. It's, it's, well, it's weird. She would, she would open the floor is a better way to put it. Right. That we were never equals, but she okay. would, she would open the floor. 
Right. right. You know, there were moments where it was like, freaks, sp speak freely, <laughs> mage. Yeah. You know, it was, it was like those types of things. It was yeah. like, just like a moment at the king's table. Where like you to address the lady. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, great. Hey, did you like that? Did you like that? Yeah, did you like it though? You want more? Don't want to work? Would rather watch videos of me grab assing with people? First of all, go up here to subscribe and then go up here to uh, watch more clips. This is like when the weatherman says that there's a high pressure system coming in. Although I'm not really used to the green screen. <laughs>